You're going to start by putting your index finger on the 5th fret of the D and you're going to hammer on twice to the 7th fret with the 3rd finger. It's a really quick hammer on. We don't really want to hear much of the 5, it's more about hearing the 7. Come back to the 5, then go to the 7th fret of the A with the 3rd finger and then down to the 8th fret of the low E with the 4th finger. Now you want to keep that 8th fret fairly short as a note and you can also do a little slide down if you want as well. Okay. From there you're going to go to the 5th fret of the A with the index finger and then you're going to hit the 7th fret with the 3rd finger. Go up to the 5th fret of the D with the index. Three notes. Okay, and then you do the same first two notes again, the 5-7 on the A, but this time you're going to do the 7th fret of the D with the 4th finger. Very similar. First one. Second one. So from the start. Then we're going to go 4 on the A with the index finger, 7 on the D with the 4th finger, then 5 on the A with the index finger, and 7 with the 3rd finger. So that's the main riff. So right in the middle of that riff you'll hear this little fill. And all I do is after the 8th fret slide down from the note C, I go to this C on the 3rd fret of the A with the index finger. Heavily palm mute and you're going to go down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Okay? And by doing that, you're going to keep your picking alternate and, uh, and fluent. And then straight back in. So for this section we're going to need a few power chords. The first one is a D5 and we can play that by putting our index finger on the A fret 5, then our third or our fourth finger on the 7 on the D. I go with fourth finger because that's what I'm comfortable with. And we're going to play that chord down, up, down, up. Move it down two frets to the C5. Same rhythm, down, up, down, up. Then you're going to put your first finger on the second fret of the D and you're going to hit the open A with it. It gives you an A5, it's the same shape but you've just moved down to an open chord rather than two fretted notes. You're going to hit that once, then second finger is going to hit the third fret of the low E, note G, and then go back to the A5 chord. I give it a tiny little pull, micro band. From there you're going to go back to the C and move straight into the D5 chord with a quick slide, but you're going to pick everything. So you're going to go down, up, down, up. So it's the down, up as you move to the D. Down, up, down. So sometimes he just plays the power chords, I think it's the first time round uh, with no slides in the middle. And then the next time, uh, every time he's gone back to here, 
you've got the 10th fret of the D and the G played together. You can do that with two fingers or first finger bar if you want. It's probably easier that way. And you're going to play it, sustain it and then slide down. You can hear me bring my um, hand to the strings there. I'm just kind of trying to show you what the uh, the rest would be, so. And obviously you can pick out when he does that in the track yourself. So to open up the solo, we've got this double stop with a bend. You're gonna put your fourth finger on the eighth fret of the B and your third finger on the seven on the G. And you're gonna bend that up whole step uh, twice in quick succession like this. So the fourth finger stays still, seventh is bending up. Whilst it's bent, you're gonna hit just the G, pre-bend and release down, hit the 5 on the G with the index finger, give it a little push, and then hit the 7 on the D, the note A, twice. So that first bit. It's okay to be a bit wild with that bend, sometimes I hit it flat and push it up. That's cool. Jimmy would approve. From there, you're going to hammer on from the 5 on the A to the 7. And then you're going to hit the 5 on the D and the G, but two separate notes. And then finish again on the 7 on the D, twice. I'm going to do the same notes again, but an octave higher, with a slight different method. Second finger on the seventh fret of the G, slide up to the nine. Then we're going to go eight on the B, eight on the E. And then hit the ten on the B. So. After we've done that, we're going to hit the eight on the high E again, followed by the ten on the B twice. A little bit quicker this time. Now we've got this really cool little thing he does. To me it sounds like he slides up really quickly with the fourth finger on the high E. Doesn't really go to a note, just slides up very quick and then quickly comes straight back down on the B. A bit like a wolf whistle. Okay. From there you're going to take the 15th fret of the B, bend that up a whole step, then have your little finger underneath on the 15th fret of the high E. You're going to hit that three times. Then hit the 15 again, pull down on the B, pull off to the 13 on the B, okay, and then hit the 14th fret Again, another A note on the G. It's one of them, it, it might sound a little bit more messy going slow, but when you get the technique and speed it up. Sounds like Jimmy. From there, I slide from the ninth fret of the D to the 11. Then I hit the 10 on the B with the index finger. Move back to the eight. And then I do nine on the G with the second finger back to the eight on the B. 
for me there, I don't know, I kind of just do quick vibrato, but kill the note dead. So it's not going. It doesn't sound like it rings out too much. Quick change, but you're going to hit the same note to begin with, with the fourth finger. So that's eighth fret of the B. And then this fast, but very cool little riff. It's, again, it's, this is the way I do it. It sounds close to what is on the record, but it might be different. I hammer on from the seventh fret of the G with the third finger to the fourth finger on the eighth fret. Blues note, immediately pull off, and then pull off that seven to the five. So you're only gonna pick once. And then you've got hammer on and two pull offs. But the speed you want really is it's a good thing to learn. It's a way of being quick without having to pick too much. Okay. After that, you're going to hit the seven again on the G with the third finger and the five with the index finger. Then I drop down to the D, hit the five and then the seven on the D. Hit that twice. He's got this um, running theme throughout, hasn't he really, where he's just resolving to A notes. But yeah, that riff again. Goes like that. Then we're gonna repeat that lick we did before with the hammer on, on the A. Exactly as it was before. So you don't need me to show you that again. After that, we're going to bar the five on the G and the B. Double stop. And we're going to go between that and the seventh fret of the D. Okay, and the rhythm is going to go double stop. Hit the seven on the D twice. Then the double stop again. And then the seven by itself. And you can kind of pull down a little bit. So if we call that like lick one, there's a little pause and you're gonna do the double stop again and the seven just once. So from here, like that. From there, we're gonna slide from the seventh fret of the G up to the nine. Go across the two eighths like we did before. And then hit the 10 on the B. Okay. So after we've finished on the two A's again, we're gonna come up to the 15th fret of the B. And we're gonna do whole step bend again. And then we're gonna hit some of those 15s on the high E. Now before we did a bend and hit it three times, this is gonna be a bend and hit in the high E twice, but um, you're going to repeat it quick succession. Okay, so you've got bend, two high E's, and I think you've got four like that, and on the fifth one, you're going to bend it up and hit the high E once. So, like this. before we come down to. This section's definitely up for debate. I slowed it down and I played all the notes individually and I could hear them all in there. Whether or not he did stack them on one guitar or different takes, I don't know. It might not even be the right notes, but sounds cool. And like I said, it's always my spin on things. So what I do is take the seventh fret of the D, third finger, seventh fret of the B, fourth finger, and it's the same rhythm as the power chords from before. But what's important here is that we use the underside of the third finger to mute that string in the middle so that we cancel it out. We just get those two. So down, up, down, up. It's part of a D major chord. You're gonna slide that down two frets, part of a C major chord.
Then I take the seventh fret of the D and the seventh fret of the G. Hit that once. Then I take the fifth fret of the D and the sixth fret of the G. And then go back to the two sevens. So it's third and fourth finger, first and second, third and fourth. And then I go back to the two fives and then down, up, down, up, slide up to the seven. Exactly like we did. So if you've got that rhythm down and, and mechanics of moving, you should be able to um, apply that to this. You'll repeat that four times. The last time, you'll come in halfway through that main riff and you'll just finish with a five to seven hammer on as if you were going to start it again. But just let it ring out. This whole outro section is awesome, but it is pretty mad, all the stuff that's going on up here. So I reckon we start with the um, those riffs, and I'll show you the other guitar that I've kind of figured out, and then we'll do those bits last, okay? So the first bit, sixth fret of the G, ninth fret of the D, first and fourth fingers, and then you're gonna come down to seven, then six. Nine on the A, seven on the A. And then nine on the E, seven on the E. You can use whatever fingers you're comfortable with there. That's the first set of notes and rhythm. Then we come up to the 10th fret of the B with the fourth finger. And we go 10, 9, 7, 9 on the G, and then 6 on the G, then 9, 7, 9 on the D. I've heard people kind of do complete harmonies for these riffs and I don't know, it kind of freaked me out a bit, it didn't sound quite right. So I just went with the second guitar being an, an A5 power chord like this to start, which you should remember from before. Okay. And then I went for this D, it's just a major third, so it's the fifth fret of the A string and then your index finger on the 4 on the D. And it's kind of like going down, down, up, down. And then I hit the 6th fret of the D and the 7th fret. And go back and forth, 1st and 2nd fingers. Because I can definitely hear those two notes at the end. And they work well, no matter uh, whether you're playing that bit or the, that bit. Do 
just to give you everything that I put in my cover, the rhythm guitar that goes behind all the noodling up here is just a D major bar chord, so that's five on the A, seven, 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 and then up to an E major, so that's seven, nine, 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 and the rhythm is just going like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So on that down, up, down, up, that second up, I'm accenting a little bit more. Okay. The reason I'm doing it muted is sometimes it's easier to hear it. And I guess you could go into that part or you could be the guitarist that goes. And do it that way as well. This outro solo is pretty chaotic in terms of timing, so I'll go through it in little bits, I'll show you the notes, and I will play it in time, but you've definitely got to listen to either my cover or the track to secure that timing, because otherwise this will end up super long video. So to begin with, we've got these stabs. Uh, it's a D major, but I'm doing 16th fret of the D, 14th fret of the G, and 15th fret of the B. Uh, third, first, and second fingers going down, like that. So you hit that once. Then we're gonna bend the 17th fret of the B up, then down, and then hit the 15th fret. Okay. On the G, we're gonna hit the 16th fret, and we're gonna bend that up, down, and give it a little bit of vibrato, so. Then hit the 14th fret of the G, then the 16th fret of the D. Okay. Bend the 16th fret of the G back up again and down. Then we're kind of going to go round in a little triangle between those notes. Like that. So you went. Bend up. Down, 14 on the G, 16 on the D, 16 on the G, 14 on the G. Keep everything nice and choppy, okay? After that, he's got these two quick notes, 16 on the D, 14 on the G. Just like that, yeah? And then we're going to slide from the 16th fret of the D to the 18. And then come back to the 14 on the D, hammer on to the 16. And then resolve on that 14. The note E, okay? So that's the first one. Second one goes 16 on the D, 14th fret of the G. Bend that 17 on the B up again. Down, and then to the 15. Bend the 16th fret of the G up again. A little bit different this time, isn't it? So, up, down, 14 on the G, 16 on the D, 14 on the G. And then we've got this. So we bend the 16th fret of the G up, then I go 15, 16, 17 on the B with my 2nd, 3rd and 4th fingers. Yeah? After that we've got this little lick. So we bend the 16 up on the G, down, hit the 14, then the 16 on the D. Then we're going to flatten that third finger down onto the G. So you can hit the G16 and then the D16 again, nice and quick. And then we hammer on 14 on the G, 16 on the G, and pull off.
And then finally to end that first little lick we've got this. So what I do here is bend the 16th fret of the D up, whole step, down, pull off, and then hit the 16th fret of the A, and flatten that finger out to the D again. Okay. And then hammer on pull off just like we did below, but on the D string. And then I do it again, but I just don't do the hammer on pull off at the end. It's my spin on things, like I said, but it's pretty close. So that second one goes like this. Second one starts with those two stabs again. Okay. Then we're going to bend the 17th fret of the B up again. Let it ring this time. Play it again. And then bring it down. Hit the 14th fret of the B. And then you're going to bend the 16th fret of the G up. Let it down. Hit the 14 and then hit the 16 again. So. Then you're gonna hit the 14 on the G, then the 16 on the D. Then we have this little riff, which is definitely my own, but it sounds cool. So I bend the 16th fret up and down. Pull off to the 14 on the G. We've got the 16th fret of the D. Pull off to the 14. Hit the 16 on the A. Then go back to the 14 on the D. And then I hammer on quickly to the 16 on the D before finishing on the 14. So that second one. So the second half of this goes 17th fret bend on the B. Pre-bend down, then hit the 15. We've done that before. Then you're gonna put your index finger on the 16th fret of the G. Second finger on the 18th fret. Okay. 19th fret of the B, you're going to bend up, then down, back to the 17 with the index finger, and then finish on the 18th fret of the G with the second. That kind of rhythm. So we've gone. Okay. Now we're going to come all the way up to the 20th fret of the B, bend that up, and then when you let it down, give it some wild vibrato. That's what I hear. Okay. Like that. 15th fret of the B, 17th fret of the B. You're going to do two quick hammer-ons like this. It's more about hammering on to the 17th fret. Okay. To finish this little bit, you're gonna go 17 on the high E, 16, and then 17 on the B. For me, the third, second fingers there are convenient because I've just gone. Okay. So hopefully that's giving you all the information you need.
it can get like proper chaotic doing this, but you know, I'm so used to someone being on the other end of it and just going, yeah, yeah, okay, next bit, next bit. Um, so just rewind it, it's, it's all there. It's just a little bit crazy. So the last one, right, let's get it done. I'm gonna slide up to the 12th fret of the D, then the 11th fret of the G, major third. Then we have this little riff. 14 to 16 on the G, hammer on. 15 to 17 on the B, hammer on, and pull off. You're gonna pick the 16 on the G, 15 on the B, 16 on the G, 14 on the G. Okay. Now we're gonna slide up to the 18th fret of the D and the 19th fret of the A. So that was a D major third. That's an E major third, but just inverted. Okay. Now that riff we did here, we just move it up two frets. Exactly the same fingers, exactly the same pattern. You could just practice doing it like that for a bit, moving it before putting the little filling notes in. Okay, so. So what we just did here, we just slide that back two frets. So it's going E, D. It's the same notes here, but because we've come from makes more sense to do it there. Up here for the E. And then back to that one for the D. So on the fourth repeat of these riffs, you're gonna come down to the 12th fret of the G, bend that up, 10 on the B and the E. Proper blues lick. You're gonna do that four times. Then you're gonna move it up two frets to 14 and 12. Again, it's just going D, E, and you do that three times. Because you slide from the 14 to the 16 on the high E for the last one. And then you'll finish with your... That's it, yeah, I apologize for some of the tuning. Um, these are old strings, because I've got some new parts coming for this, um, and I didn't want to just put a brand new set of strings on it and then have to take them off again, so they're a bit ropey. They're actually nine and a halfs, which I tried and don't like, so yeah, there we go. Anyway. I hope you've got all the information you need. Go practice it, have fun.